Like I always wanted to just like dance in the background and then be like, hi girls, what's going on? So welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole Johnson and this is not just a beauty blogger where I talk about IVF, getting through it, and I am not sugarcoating anything. I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, so what are we talking about today, girls? What are we talking about? We are gonna talk about eight tips on how to get independence from IVF. It's all coming up right now. Okay, so number one, whatever you're not doing and not planning because you might become pregnant, just plan it now. I did this for so long where I was like, oh, I can't plan the trip to Napa because I'm gonna be pregnant, or we can't plan that cruise because I'll be pregnant, or we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do whatever because I might be pregnant. Like, just plan it. Like, it's so hard because everything's about timing and a cycle and all this kind of stuff. Just plan it because guess what? You'll figure it out when you do become pregnant. So don't worry about it. So live your life now. That was something that it, I think it's hard when, when you're in infertility that you're always like planning like, oh, I'm gonna be pregnant that cycle or I'm gonna be pregnant this transfer. So just do it. All right, so number two, refuse to be that friend that's the infertile friend. Like, so basically you come out to your friends and family and then every time you see them, that's all you talk about. So. Let them know that you don't want to talk about fertility every time you see them. You have a lot more to offer in your life than infertility. And that's what happened to me where people would be like, oh, so what's happening? What cycle are you on? What, you know, what happened? All this kind of stuff. And, you know, it just kind of, if you're not having a great cycle, it really just kind of reminds you and puts all of that back into your mind. And it's hard because you don't want to be like the person that's like, oh, I'm the one that can't get pregnant. Like I actually felt like I had like the scarlet letter when I would walk into like all the mommy friends and everything like that, like IVF or infertility or whatever. And I just felt like, I felt like really like, why do I, I, I need to separate myself from this. So separate yourself and talk about everything else that's amazing in your life and don't focus in on the infertility. All right. So number three, stop tracking your cycles. Okay. So if you're in your first to 12 months of trying to conceive, obviously you're tracking your cycles, but once you've passed that, just stop tracking your cycles. I mean, with that, the body basal temperature thing, like you can't even put your foot on the ground when you wake up. So basically you're sleeping and then you wake up and then you side eye that temperature thing. And then you're like, Oh yeah, that's right. Cause if you put your foot on the ground or you do anything, it totally throws off the whole chart. I mean, it's the biggest nightmare. So just, Throw it away, stop tracking your cycles, get independent from being on this whole like, oh my gosh, when's it gonna happen? Oh my gosh, I didn't ovulate it, ovulated. Like it just makes you so crazy. Separate yourself, get independence, and move forward with your morning without that temperature. Okay, so number four is going to scare you girls, but throw away your pregnancy tests. Like you know the stash that you have just in case and what have you, where it makes a two week wait that much harder, whether it's a natural cycle or you're doing IVF, IUI, what have you. So basically it's like, oh, you sit there and you're like, oh no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to test. I'm not going to test. Well, maybe I'll just test. I know it's early. Like maybe I'll just do one test. Now, if it comes back negative, I know it's early. So it's no big deal. But are you kidding me? It is such a wave of nightmare. Like the pregnancy test situation. Like I always thought mine were broken. I'm like, oh, I got the batch that was broken. Like I never have seen like the second pink line. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just draw in the pink line or they would like malfunction. Like when I would get a digital and say error, I'm like, I wrote a blog post about it. Actually. It was like, hello, vodka. It's me. Pregnancy test or something like that. I was like, why is it? I just can't, I can't win with them. So I'm just not gonna, I'm just throwing them all away. I think I actually gave them, I put it on, um, one of the boards and I was like, I have a lot of pregnancy tests that I would love to give somebody. I would gift them to you. <laughs> Just give me your address and I'm going to send them. So that is one thing that really you can claim your independence when you don't have any pregnancy tests in your house. It will give you so much sanity. Okay. Five, start making long-term plans that are not baby related. So we start to get a very like narrow tunnel vision of our future when it comes to infertility, IVF, you know, trying to have a baby, this and that. So make plans that have nothing to do with 
babies in the long term? Like, where do you want to see your career in five, 10 years? Where do you want to be living? Where do you want to see your relationship? Where do you want your spiritual goals to be? You know, all these things that are so important in your life besides just having a baby. So start planning, start thinking about things and really just see your, see your life outside of this whole infertility game. All right, number six. So take a little break from Facebook or do you find yourself on message boards all the time and it's just getting a little too much for you where it's all you do is like the first thing you do is you wake up and you're like on the boards, you're talking to a bunch of people and this and that, just take a sabbatical. Like separate yourself and I've done this before. I like deleted Instagram just off of my phone, the app, and then I took off Facebook too because I just needed some space. Like I just was like, no more, it's just so much noise. So start focusing in on things that you have succeeded at and things that are important to you because basically you can start focusing on your cycles and feel like a real loser and that that is a very scary place to be because if you put all of your effort into thinking about what's not working you can get into a very bad space so start thinking about all the things that you've achieved big things little things like things that make you happy like all the things that income that make you who you are and fertility is a very small part girls i mean it's a very small part of our lives for a very short period of time yes it can be 10 years or it could be 15 years or it can be five I'm just saying in general, we only have a certain amount of time to get pregnant. So it's not like it's our whole life that we're going to be, you know, in this, the trenches of infertility. So start thinking about the things that you have accomplished and what's really beautiful about your life. A gratitude journal is a really great way to start and just really focus in on the positive and what you have in your life right now. Number seven, become a fertility warrior. So that might mean you join the Resolve Board and you start really getting involved in the Walk of Hope or you go lobby in DC, which is something that I wanna do, or make awareness, start an infertility blog, get involved, start an Instagram. You don't have to have a blog if you don't like writing, you can have an Instagram account, you can be private, you can be open, just, you know, just get out there and fight and be a warrior and be an example and share your story with other girls, it helps all of us so much to hear what you're going through. Maybe it was a miscarriage and this is how you dealt with it. Maybe it was failed cycles like me and never actually having implantation and, and what I did to really help myself or help me get to the next step. Or maybe you, you know, are, are going through menopause and you're, th you know, 30 or 25, or you don't have an ovary or you had polycystic ovaries in them and a cyst broke and you're now left with just one fallopian tube. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Everyone has such a unique story that I would encourage you to share it because it really helps us. So if there was none of us were speaking out, we would all feel so alone and we would feel so terrible about ourselves because we'd be like, oh, everyone just gets pregnant. No one has any trouble. It's just me. And that's how I really did feel until I reached out and I really found you know, my tribe. And that's what I really want to create with this channel is just, you know, a place of safety and hope and encouragement. And I really do encourage you to come out and be a girl boss with your fertility journey. We're all waiting here to listen to you. So I really hope that you do it. And number eight is just really take back your life from infertility. Find a counselor that's gonna help you emotionally move through this. I personally have been seeing a therapist. I find it to be not taboo. I'm more than happy to tell everybody about it. I don't feel like it's a weakness. I feel like it's like having a coach and I can talk about everything I'm feeling and I can tell people or I can tell my counselor like, you know, this is what's going on. How do I handle this? How do I work through these emotions? And sometimes you're talking about stuff and you're like, wow, I think I just answered that for myself because I could hear myself talking about it. And you're not just downloading to your husband or your partner. You're really being able to work through this and be healthy on a mental level. It's so, so important. So those are my eight tips, girls. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope that you give me feedback, leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel and help me create this really wonderful environment for women that need encouragement through IVF. I'll see you in my next video.